Hi everyone, um, today's uh, video uh, has the objectives to do a deeper analysis of heat transfer and work transfer, and secondly to provide the first law of thermodynamics uh, for closed systems. So taking a look at our heat transfer first of all, heat transfer if you recall is defined as when energy is transferred spontaneously across a temperature gradient. So it is important to note that it is not a property of a system like volume, internal energy or pressure, rather it is a process, the process of changing the energy within a, uh, within a system. So between two states in time and uh, space, uh, which we will denote as state 1 and state 2, the uh, Q12, capital Q12, denotes a transfer of energy by heat transfer and this is going to be in joules or more um, commonly it's going to be given in kilojoules in thermodynamics. So uh, just like we have extensive and intensive properties, we also have extensive and intensive processes. And Q12 by definition is an ex extensive process. So its intensive form is going to be the lowercase Q12 and that's going to be measured in joules per kilogram or more commonly it's going to be in kilojoules per kilogram. Furthermore, Q12 with a dot on top denotes the rate of energy transfer by heat. And so this is going to be in kilojoules per second, which is in kilowatts, or if you're working in, in or in the rare case that you're working in joules, it will be in our joules per second. Other key things to note about heat is that if we are told that something is adiabatic, adiabatic means that the process uh, has no heat transfer within it, so therefore Q12 will be zero. And the convention for the sign of uh, heat is that if heat is, goes into a system, it is positive, and if heat goes out of a system, it is negative. So consider, for example, a beaker with a hot, um, resting on a hot plate. A beaker full of water and it's resting on a hot plate with a high temperature. For, uh, let us take this, uh, the water inside the beaker as our system, as our closed system. So what is happening in this uh, in this pro in this um, situation is that there's going to be uh, a temperature gradient between this higher temperature uh, hot plate and the um, water, and so essentially what's going to happen is that energy is going to be transferred into the system, and so therefore this will be Q in, which will be a positive number. Similarly, if you, for example, had another beaker and you had a cold surrounding over here, so that's going to be a T, a low temperature. And if you had the same uh, system, then necessarily there will be some heat transfer from the hot uh, water to the lower temperature, and so this will be Q out, which will be a negative number. So now that we have done the uh, convention of this um, heat, we move on to our work transfers. Now, work, um, if you recall, is defined as the energy transferred when motion is applied against an opposing force. So just like for heat, it is not a property of a system, rather it is a process. So between states 1 and 2, capital W12 denotes a transfer of energy by work transfer in joules, or more commonly will be in kilojoules. Work 1, 2, just like uh, Q1, 2 is going to be an extensive process, and so the intensive form is a lowercase w12, and that's going to be measured in joules per kilogram, or kilojoules per kilogram. And just like our Q.12, our work.12 denotes the rate of energy transfer by work, and this is going to be in kilowatts, you know, or kilojoules per second, or if you are working in joules per second, it will be in just watts. It is also, in, um, in this case, the work12 dot is also often referred to as the term power. So now the convention for work is inverted to the convention for heat. That is that if work is placed into the system, it is going to be a negative number, and if work is taken out of the system, it is going to be a positive number. So a best way to illustrate this is having a uh, piston cylinder arrangement, for example. And we have the cylinder here and the piston here. 
and if we take this enclosed system, uh, this enclosed space as our system, then if work is put into the system, that is if you press down onto the uh, piston, then as a necessary result, there will be a work transfer into the system, which will be a negative number by our convention. Similarly, if the if this uh, system, if it somehow manages to push against the uh, the, uh, the piston right here, so basically there's going to be uh, energy transfer from here to there, then there's going to be a work out, and that is going to be a positive number by our convention. Unlike uh, uh, heat, work can be somewhat um, quantitatively analyzed if we look at our fundamental principles from uh, physics. From fundamental physics, uh, work is defined as the force times by the displacement. So if we take it in differential form, it will be dW is equal to F times uh, the dot product of dS. Now, recall that pressure is equal to the force on area, so force is going to equal to the pressure times by the area. So therefore, we can replace our dW by PADS. And ADS is actually just going to be the infinitesimal change in volume. So therefore, our DW is actually equal to PDV. So if we put it into integral form, we will have that the work is equal to the integral of PDV. This is our most fundamental identity for work in thermodynamics. No matter where, no matter what substance, no matter how it's working, it will always have work of equal to the integral of PDV. So if you have the process between states 1 and state 2, we can replace that, uh, we, can, we can put in the subscript of 1, 2, and we can replace the indefinite integral with uh, the definite integral between 2 and 1 of PDV. Now this equation yields some interesting uh, situations. The two interesting situations uh, that we will be looking at and that will be the most uh, important for us is if, number one, if the pressure is constant. If the pressure is constant, then by basic calculus, the P can be taken out of the integral. And as such, if we uh, evaluate this uh, integral, we will find that the work one two is just going to be the simple equation of P V2 minus V1. The second uh, situation that is of interest to us is if the volume is kept constant. If the volume is kept constant, then the dV, the change in volume, is going to be zero by definition. And so therefore, this will be the integral between 2 to 1 of p times by zero, and the integral of zero is just zero. So this basically says that if the volume is kept constant in a system, then there is no, there is no chance of work being done uh, by the system thermodynamically. So now that we have established our heat and our work, it is important to move on to our uh, first law of thermodynamics. Now the first law of thermodynamics is, the, uh, is a manifestation of the conservation of the mass energy principle. So since mass cannot change within, within a closed system, then necessarily it is uh, somewhat neglected in our analysis. Now, Recall the uh, definition of what U is, the internal energy. U is the internal energy of a system that is saying that it's all the absolute energy uh, within a thermodynamic system at any given point in time. So therefore, if you change the energy of a system by heat or by work, then as a necessary result, this U will be changing. And so therefore, it will make sense that the change in U will be the sum of whatever heat transfer has been done to the system and whatever work transfer has been done to the system. Now, by the convention, uh, since our Q and our W, uh, the signs are inverted for the convention, that is, when it's into the system, the Q is positive but the work is negative, and vice versa, then it makes sense that this uh, should be... Uh, simplify to be Q minus W in order to maintain uh, the correct uh, signage. So therefore this is going to be our first law for closed systems. Remember it well because it will come up very often. The change in internal energy is equal to the Q transfer minus the work transfer. And so between states 1 and 2 you just add in the subscripts Q12 minus work12 is equal to the change in U12. 
Get study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.